So if the first derivative shows you how fast something is changing, how fast are you breathing, take the derivative. How fast the air is moving in this room, take the derivative. Then the second derivative says how fast the change is changing. And the easiest way to imagine it is, of course, acceleration from the velocity. And then uh, these graphs, you saw them quite a lot in 2020, all the spread of COVID and so on. So if you watch this video, which was very popular at some point, what is kind of inflection point they all talking about? Today, we're finally going to learn what is inflection point. And it is a very cool topic as in biology and engineering. It's actually, as you can see, this is medical biology and so on. Inflection point is the point that changes concavity. Something used to be concave and then became convex or concave down, up, and so on. This will be done through the second derivative. So look at that, very interesting. The first derivative of, so this is COVID spread, blah, 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 some kind of timing. And then we learn increasing, decreasing properties. These properties are coming from the first derivative. Or if you put a pencil on the graph, the pencil is going up, going up, going up, going up, going up. Which means the first derivative is always positive, right? Right. The cases were increasing. But as you can see, I just start, yeah. <laughs> uh, but as you can see, the uh, increase can be different. Sometimes increase is fast, sometimes increase is slow. That is acceleration. How fast your speed is increasing? From 55 miles per hour to 56 or from 55 to 95? There is a difference of how fast the increase is increasing. And that is a derivative of the derivative. This point over here changed some kind of situation, which was in this case in China. The increase of the cases of COVID were adding up very fast. Then some kind of methods were implemented, say vaccination or isolation and so on. People still were getting sick, that is important to understand, but with a slower rate. So increase can have faster rate or slower rate. Decrease can have faster rate or slower rate. So this is what we're going to call uh, inflection point or point that changes concavity of the function, changes how the increase or decrease changes its own speed, which is a pretty cool idea. So this is a nice sketch as well. I made a screenshot. They all were talking about inflection point. So a number of cases were growing. Then we started implementing isolation. And then point of inflection shows up. Inflection point. You saw it uh, quite a lot probably in the news. What does it mean? Blah, blah, blah. We need to learn how to find this point and how to explain what it means. But in this, uh, you can see that the growth factor when you take number of people who got sick from tomorrow and divide by the number from today or from today to yesterday, this growth factor is changing. Even though the function is keep increasing, today we had 55 new cases and tomorrow we had only 35 new cases. We're still having new cases, but the speed is different. That is a pretty cool idea. And here's the definition, concavity inflection point. So inflection point, this is for you to write down. Uh, I also, we call also called POI. I like calling it POI, point of inflection. If F is differentiable, who knows what it means to be differentiable? Yes. To be possible to be differentiated. Yes, to be possible to be differentiated. Or it means it has derivative on the open interval, in this case, I. If F prime, the first derivative, F prime, is increasing. Think about it. F prime is increasing. If F prime is increasing, then its second derivative is positive. Then we're going to call F concave up on that interval. So let me do in blue. If the derivative, not the original function, is increasing, so second derivative is positive. Then the original function is concave up in green. If decreasing, the derivative is decreasing, so second derivative is negative. Then we're going to call it concave down, not concave and convex. So English did not meet with math terminology here. I don't know why. If F is continuous at C and F changed concavity at C, we're going to call this point inflection point or point of inflection. I like poi because it's nice notation. Poi, yeah. From up to down. 
So do you know also Poi is a juggling tool, but written a little bit differently? So I learned how to juggle this. I should send you guys link. On fire. Well, that's what I learned to juggle it on fire. <laughs> I should send you the link or that. The event we're actually performing will be in November, so pretty soon. But uh, they are like things at the end of the rope and you juggle with them, also called Poi. So if concavity change from plus to minus to minus to plus, that point changed the concavity and we call it inflection point. It inflected the concavity. Test for concavity. Yeah, yeah, I'll copy this. If second derivative is positive, then the original function is concave up. If second derivative is negative, then this, oh, let's see. Much better. Then the original function is concave down. And then C, if it's in domain, change the concavity, it's inflection point. So I will make a sketch for you. We're going to have a sine line. A sine line. But this time for the second derivative. And that's what I told you. Be careful, soon we're going to have a sine line for the second derivative. We're going to find our critical values. Let's call them C1 and C2. We'll learn how to find those. Derivative is 0 or D and E there. Then we're going to take, take test points, any random points you like, in those intervals. If the second derivative, second, not the first one, is positive, and that's going to be my notation, then the original function in blue, original, there is no first derivative in this graph at all. The original function is concave up, and this is my personal notation. So again, each instructor teaches differently, but this one is the one I like the most. If the second derivative, again, you see this second over here, second derivative at the test point is negative, then the original function is concave down, positive, concave up. If the point changed the concavity, and also in the domain, then we call it inflection point or point of inflection if in the domain. That is the annoying important detail because some points are actually vertical asymptotes and they also can change the concavity. I will show you example later. I can't read the original test. Oh, sorry. <laughs> good, you know, good job for telling me. So remember, increasing, decreasing, is about first derivative. Concavity is about a second derivative. If C is a point on the interval and is defined and change the sign of a second derivative, it's called an inflection point. There's lots of cool examples. One of them I found for the business students, or so general people who like business. Remember the spinner toy? Actually, they, I think going back to be popular again. But at the very beginning, I was actually in China where they were only created. They, were, they cost like 30 cents. And then I came from China to the United States and they were so expensive here, $10 each, because they just show up. So when spinners were created, some of you still using them as a fidget tool uh, to get distracted or help you to concentrate, right? So if you think about the profit with time t of selling the spinner, and this is gonna be p, usually we call it profit, p, profit. Then when they first show up on the market, they became super popular. So say they show, they show, from, uh, they show up at zero point, people start selling say 100, and then the profit was jumping up like crazy. Everyone wanted to have a spinner. They had different colors, Marvel, characters on it, anime, whatever you want, different sizes. In the, all different countries, think about that. In Ukraine, in the United States, in Korea, everyone had spinners. So they were so like crazy. But then people got tired of them. And also, how many spinners do you need? One, two, well, that's it, right? Then you buy one for your friend. That's all. So at some point, people will still keep buying them, but not so much anymore. That means profit is not decreasing. Well, you don't lose money of your company. You're still selling them, just not as much as before. And that is a very nice visualization that at this point, something happened. This point, inflection happened. That's why it's a point of inflection. Very interesting to explain this complicated idea. So try to pay, pay attention right now. Here, the original function f is increasing, 
And here, the original function f is also increasing, right? Again, profit is still increasing. But let me change the color. On this side, it's increasing with the decreasing rate. So originally, it was increasing with the increasing rate. Let me know if you cannot read. Uh, originally, it was increasing with increasing rate. And then it was keep increasing, but with decreasing rate. But still increasing. That's funny that it's listening of English with it, but also think about the application. When selling the product, it got super popular, increasing with increasing rate, people got tired of it. It's still increasing, but slows down. So it's increasing with decreasing speed. That is what second derivative tells you. Pretty cool idea. So that means, that means, let me choose the color. The first derivative is positive all the time. But the second derivative is positive first. And then the second derivative is negative after poi. That is also what I wanted to point out. Poi changed the sign of the second derivative. So it was concave up and then it became concave down. And we're going to practice this terminology and the ideas right now quite a lot. You know, with Coca-Cola, it's also the same thing. Coca-Cola was super popular at the beginning. Everyone was buying it. And people got tired of it. So it was still everywhere, but not so popular. And then they decided to put names on Coca-Cola bottles. Genius idea. And again, it blew up. And everyone wanted to have their own name, like Anna or Martin. And then the Russians have our own names, like Nastya and Boris. And it was like, and then they changed to the sister and brother and dad. And so that was a genius marketing idea. It again started being increasing and with decre increasing rate. And then people got tired of it as well. <laughs> so that is why we teach this in business calculus classes as well, because uh, they need to learn this stuff. Awesome. I'm teaching a fun way to memorize it. In the book, they again forces you to memorize things. I don't like memorization, so I have a funny way to show you how to usually remember it. If the second derivative is positive, the original function is smiling. Concave up. Look at that. That's cute. Moreover, you see this tongue at the bottom? That is going to be your local or sometimes global minimum. And we're going to talk about it right now. How nice it is to remember. So visualization. I know many students are visual learners. And that's why I like showing this. This is what we're going to call concave up. Second derivative is positive. Now. Look at that, look at that. It's better even after this. If the second derivative is negative, the original function is grumpy. How cute is that? They, in the book, they said frowning. Then the nose over here is your maximum. It's visually obvious. It's on the top of the mountain, so it is maximum. And we're going to call it concave down. Concave down. How do you like that? So my students, every time they go to the tutoring center, they draw this to tutors and tutors like, where did you get this from? <laughs> and I think my students are the only one who do that. So that's kind of the idea to memorize. So just like what I told you about the tongue and the, um, the nose, Second derivative will tell us where the maximum has, where the function has maximum minimum. That's what we're gonna call second derivative test. Welcome to the second derivative test. Don't worry, we're not gonna have third derivative for more tests. So, if a function is continuous, you can skip that. But f prime of c gives you zero, then. Well, we will also check D and E points, to be honest, but uh, fine. I'll show it later. If, if the second derivative is positive, what did I just tell you? This is the official definition. But with the mnemonic funny rule, the second derivative is positive. It's also, students usually remember it's vice versa, but with this image, now you know. Oh, the original function is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, 
then you immediately make the image it's grumpy then you know concave up has a tongue so it's a minimum it's always the other way around if the second derivative positive we have minimum or if it's grumpy it's a nose then it's a maximum if the second derivative is zero test did not work and we have to use another test <laughs> that's what we call inconclusive the test is inconclusive use another test another test and that's what scientists do we have lots of different tests and we just uh, we cannot claim it's maximum or minimum it just did not work so that's the idea and i'll give you very nice steps and this is what we put in the second exam Can I have one more Sorry. first yeah first derivative test second derivative test and find at some point we're going to collect all the information soon actually this week right now we're going to have example and i'll ask you to find what where is the functions increasing decreasing local minimum local maximum can't give up can't keep down points of inflection sketch the graph <coughs> sketch the graph so that's going to be uh, important okay let's do the example uh now let me ask you are you done writing not yet, but I think I can. I'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, not only you. <laughs> what? No, no, you keep writing. I'm sorry. I'm Good job. I, I don't mean to be rude. I'm no, sorry. you're not. And also, you're left handed, you see, just like me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do the example. Done. Well, I do share all the notes, so don't worry about it. And I will post, I already posted these notes, by the way. I can show you where, well, in modules, but I don't, I don't want to switch the screen or else the screen will be shaking. Example, here's the function. It's a force power. X to the 4 minus 4x cubed. Find everything, <laughs> which is, find local extreme values, local extrema, Local extrema, which is local maximum, local minimum. Find poi. Find where the functions can't keep up, can't keep down. All of that kind of stuff. So everything. And then let's see. And mean max. Oh, that's yeah. That's really good. Good. So as you can see, your homework will take time. Don't postpone your homework. Uh, I always honest when the homework is faster. Not this one takes time. Usually students complain that this homework is just time consuming because it has so much information at the same time. Solution. So let me give you steps how to work on this. A, we're going to start with uh, finding the first derivative. How do I know? Uh, oh, because I'm teaching this. No. So, local extreme values and increasing decreasing intervals. These are usually about the first derivative. Second derivative also shows you local extreme values, but usually we do use the first one. So, when you have this question in your homework or on a test, you start with what? Differentiating. That's why we teach you to differentiate things, because we keep doing it all the time. X to the 4 gives you... 4x cubed, good job, minus 12x squared. I heard the quiet people, good job. So, remember I told you put it in the box? Put everything in the box from now on, because we're going to use things, and it's going to be so messy that it's better be visual for you to find it in your notes. If you're a neat writer, you're fine. But if you're a messy writer, this is a very nice thing to do, to learn, uh, to put every important things in the box. Or in a circle so we want to find critical values critical values are found from setting derivative to zero or d and e right not setting finding where the first derivative is zero or doesn't exist well it's a cubic function so it exists everywhere actually let's make a comment that the original function the original function uh, is a polynomial. It's a polynomial. Thus, I like this word, thus, because it's a GRE kind of written part work, word. Thus, it exists. So domain is minus infinity to infinity. That is important, which means, this means that anything we're going to find right now will be considered. 
it's all in a domain, so we don't have to be worried. Domain. Now, there's no DNA points for the cubic function, so we just need to solve. And we did something like this before. Let's factor out 4x squared, and it's going to be x minus 3 equals to 0. Good. So we have two roots, 0 and 3. These are critical values. Remember critical values? They're called critical because potential is something critical is happening at those values. Maybe they are minimum or maximum, or maybe not, but at least we don't have to look for other, at other points. Step two, just like we did last time, we're going to do a sign line. But now we do know that we can do two types of sign line. Now we can choose to do first derivative test, which we learned before, first derivative test, or second derivative test, which we just learned right now and did not do yet. So that's going to be a choice. On a test, we're going to tell you which one to use. With experience as a scientist, you know which one is handy at which moment. With polynomials, second derivative test is better. With fractions, first derivative test is better, and so on. So now we can choose. I will show you both because it's not very time consuming and because you should help me to do the first one. Remember how we do the first derivative test. I'm writing, I'm drawing a sign line about the first derivative. I'm putting my critical points 0 and 3 on the sign line. I'm choosing some handy test points and plugging them where? Into this box, which is the first derivative. And that's why it's called sign, line of the first derivative. Or that's why it's called first derivative test. So just very fast, I will do it this time. Minus 1, minus 4, minus 12 seems like negative or positive. Minus 1. Oh, um, well, you choose any any test points. What kind of test points you want to choose here? Yeah, I kind of liked minus 1 as well. So I'm plugging minus 1 into the first derivative. Do I get plus or minus? minus. Seems like I get minus, right? I wonder why in my notes it's plus. <laughs> minus, how do I know? I can quickly plug e either over here or into the original. Minus, minus gives you minus times x squared gives you still minus. Then, if I plug 1, oh, I see, my notes just random. 1 gives you minus. And then if I, if, if I plug a million, plus. So, like, just that's kind of what computer also does, testing with testing points. Then the original function from here, f, is decreasing, decreasing, increasing. We did this before. So that's what the first derivative test does. It also tells you that this is a local minimum. This is your choice. So we ask you to find local minimum, local maximum. You can do this one. And you know, you practice it, so you kind of know it. And also it gives you information about where the function is increasing or decreasing. Second derivative test is faster, though. So some students just like it because of that. Second derivative test, we're going to do it for the first time right now. We don't even need a sign line. We just need to find. So we need to find a second derivative. And since it's a polynomial function, look at the box. It's very easy. 4x cubed gives me 12x squared. And minus 12x squared gives me 24x. Done. So I just need to find second derivative. And now I need to check the sign of the second derivative. At those two points, that's all. Very fast. We don't need any test points. I just need to check. What is the sign of the second derivative at 0? Uh, let me do like this. And then what is the sign of the second derivative at 3? If it is positive, then you remember smiling, so it's concave up. If it's negative, then it's grumpy, so it's concave down. So at 0, it is 0. And that's where the second derivative test fails you, because then it says no info. Unfortunately, the test did not work. 
uh, use another test. Use another test. And that is... Yeah, and this is, I like how Chris is so optimistic. Luckily, we did that. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. So if you have zero, don't freak out and say, there's no info, this test just failed you. That's fine. Computers do it all the time. But what about at three, positive or negative? At three. If you're not good at the mental calculations, oh. then actually calculate three squared minus 24 times three. But I just need a sign. It is positive. Since it is positive, you should remember its local minimum right away. But if you don't remember, then you remember my funny sketch. Positive second derivative original function is concave up and the tongue is minimum. So this small diagram kind of reminds you how to figure it out. So f of x is concave up on this interval and I will show you uh, later which one. And then uh, um, f at 3 has local minimum. So that's what the second derivative test is for. The other one, the zero one, did not give us information. So luckily, we did the test. And at 0, it was no minimum, no maximum. As you can see, the function was decreasing and then it was decreasing again. So that's why the first derivative test helped us. We answered, we're going to answer all the information at the end, three, step three. Let's find poi, inflection points, and concavity. Those questions... Those questions are coming from the second derivative only. How do we know the whole thing is concave up? Yeah, I'm showing you right now. Don't spoiler my uh, TV show. <laughs> second derivative. Second derivative sine line will show you everything about concavity, point of inflection, because that's exactly the rate of the rate. Rate of change of rate of change. It's a second derivative. We're drawing a sine line for the second derivative now. And that is why when you take a second derivative, put it in the box right away because we will need it. And I did not do that, you see. 12x squared minus 24x, put it in the box. Right now we will be doing exactly the same test, but for the second derivative. Let's put those points we found, 0 and 3, on the second derivative sine line. And do exactly the same procedure with the test points. Any test points, you can do different ones. But now you're going to plug them into the second derivative. That's why I like to make this notation. Because it reminds you where to plug things. First derivative test, sine line, you plug into the first derivative. Second derivative test, sine line, you plug into the second derivative. Here is the box. You can choose same points or different. Minus 1. 12x squared plus 24, right, if it's minus 1, gives you, what is the sign? Plus. So again, plugging into the second derivative. Zoop, over here. Test points. Test points are now going, in, yeah, going into the second derivative. Since... Since the second derivative, the second derivative if is positive, the original function f, I'll put it in red, is smiling or concave up. Concave up. Let's continue. Let's put some handy number like 1. Let me look at the second derivative. 12 minus 24. It's negative. <laughs> Since the second derivative is negative, that means the original function is concave down or grumpy. Last test point, you can put like 100 or whatever you want, 10. Very big number will be at first because it's squared minus smaller number. So that means the result is positive. Concave up. Concave, concave up, down, up like so. 
that is the original function. The second derivative test shows me the concavity of the original function. Does it make, did you all understand what did I plug it in? What is going on? What is the meaning of light? Like, ask. <laughs> so, Chris just keeps spoiling my lecture. I'm telling you, he should just go and teach it. Yes. <laughs> so, oh, sorry, you just question. Zero, zero and three are poi for two reasons. For two reasons. Because, no, you're good. Because one, as x equals 0 and 3 did change, so changed the concavity from up to down, from down to up. Concavity, both. And second reason, they are in the domain of the original function, which was minus infinity plus infinity anyways. So that's important. If it's not in domain, it might be vertical asymptote. I'll show you in a second so that that is not good. You cannot call vertical asymptote point of inflection because it's not a point, it's an asymptote. Does that make sense? So, let me see if we need to conclude. Okay, let's conclude everything. For the original function f of x is concave up and concave down. I'm usually saving some writing. From and to. Who wants to read me the intervals? Concave up. Negative infinity to zero. To zero. That's all? And, sorry, and, and, sorry, three to infinity. Three to infinity. Agree, disagree, comment. Don't forget, don't include points, never include those points, because at those points, it was neither concave up nor concave down, so you cannot include it. Concave down is whatever happened in between from zero to three. Make sense? And poi, sometimes people are listed at the very end, poi x equals zero and three. What? So, I do have, I'll show you this in a second, I do have a graph for you here. Oh, yeah, I, I was thinking, should I pause it out or not? We did do it here. So the second derivative, I just did not mention, the second derivative, the second derivative here gave us that f of 3 is your local minimum. Remember why? Because the second derivative was positive, so it's a smiley face, and the bottom of the smiley face is a tongue, so that is minimum. So we did find it like so. I just did not want to find the output. But we now know that at 3, x equals 3, there is a local minimum. Make sense? Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, good job for pointing this out. I do have a graph. Here it is. I just put it in Wolfram Alpha. Here, how it looks like. Let's check, and that's what you should do. You should always check, you know, if, if it even makes sense. So, green color, let's see. First of all, increasing, decreasing. The first derivative sign line, here it is, says it's decreasing at zero, stops for a second, and then it's decreasing to three, and then it's increasing. Let's see if it makes sense. So, you use graphing calculator to actually graph it, or add it to Wolfram Alpha. And it's true, look at that. It's decreasing decreasing at zero stops that was sometimes you called horizontal tension and keep decreasing till three at three it starts increasing and that is why at three x equals three there's a local minimum the first derivative is positive and the first derivative is negative see and the minimum oh and here at zero the first derivative is zero and here the first derivative is zero but now the concavity idea the concavity idea is a little bit more interesting imagine there is a rain falling down to this graph where the water will be accumulating this is where the functions can keep up so 
I can see that concavity was happening over here at zero if you remember this is poi at zero the concavity changed so the second derivative was positive until zero we just listed those intervals if you remember let me show you again from minus infinity to zero can give up then can give down till three then can give up forever i imagine it as a rain rain is pouring the water is keep accumulating you see that means the, it's the shape of the cup so it's concave up concave up the negative first derivative means the original function is decreasing that's what it means so compare first derivative versus second derivative um, meanings then poi of inflection changed the concavity and concavity became negative uh, second derivative became negative so now water is falling down until three you see so that is concave down and then at three so we have two poise poi here and here at three the water started accumulating again so the second derivative became positive again concave up that's the idea here and these are called poi so the last four minutes i'll show you how americans were building highways but uh, do you have questions about this what do you think pretty cool idea so you know each country decided at some point do we want to use public transportation or cars america at some point decided that we're going to be using cars so let's build highways because investment was important europe invested in public transportation so i'm the only person the first person in my family who owns the car and knows how to drive because my bus happens every three minutes to every direction in the city so there is no reason to have a car but very interesting when you drive on the highway you actually see the concavity all the time and that is apparently important this is my sketch this is a deer okay <laughs> when i was learning how to drive in america i was explained julia you see a deer you hit the deer because apparently swirling is more dangerous to other people than hitting the deer that is very unusual for me we don't have deers in ukraine so much so they don't go to the road so right you see the deer you hit the deer but the thing is apparently concavity of the highway matters if you're driving at night you have beams on you don't see a deer if the concave up shape is too big so the second derivative is too big you will see the deer when you're already here and it's a little bit too late if the shape of the highway is concave up but not so much so second derivative is positive but not large numbers your beam lights will see the deer from the far and you will slow down how cool is that moreover it works you see so there was whole statistics about the uh, um, accidents on the road this is a very dangerous situation you are driving over here you don't see who is going out from here maybe there's a car lost the uh, control and now it's in your lane or maybe deer crossing jumping suicidally i don't know <laughs> so, <laughs> same situation here look at that you're driving at night there's a human this time let's make me more dramatic if your beans if it's more flat it still can't keep down right but it's more flat you will see this giant oh it's a uh, attack on titans you see the titan from the far and you better turn around right but if you are driving up the hill which is so concave down that your beams cannot even detect a titan in front of you you're screwed or or the titan screw depends on your car right so that is pretty cool applications some of the applications of concavity including the profit example i showed you and so on it's actually pretty interesting very interesting so enjoy your homework but um oh we still have 10 minutes i just wanted to explain this and also grand canyon has a whole cool exploration of the trees if you ever notice on the top of the canyons trees keep swirling because they realize that concavity gives them very interesting aerodynamical properties so not to break during the wind they decide to do the concavity up and down and keep rotating them all the time that is also pretty cool application the last thing i wanted to say and we can actually go 
right after this. Please copy this. The point of inflection, note, last thing to say. The point of inflection, poi, I keep calling it poi, but you should know it's inflection point, it's the same thing. Books did not agree how to call it, so whatever. Inflection point, inflection. Which one do you like more? Point, inflection point or point of inflection? Inflection point has to be in the domain of the original function f, of original f of x. For example, here is a nice example. So, as you can see, two vertical, oh, one vertical asymptote happened here. And this vertical asymptote did change the concavity. The picture on the left is your highway, which is concave up. So, this is concave up, which means the second derivative is positive. This one is concave down. Again, how do I know? Uh, it's not very ob obvious it's grumpy or smiley. So that's why I like imagining uh, the rain pouring and accumulating. But the rain will accumulate over here, but definitely will fall off from here. So the second derivative is negative on the right from the VA. So this point C is not point, a point of inflection. You cannot call it poi. Why? Because it's a vertical asymptote. BC, because it is not in the domain. So vertical domain in. Vertical. Okay, let me put in capitals. Rainbow. Not poi. Vertical asymptotes can change the concavity. In general, vertical asymptotes can change the behavior, increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, but they're not in any domain. So you have to check that. Very interesting. Any questions, concerns, ideas? Then be careful people don't get sick. It gets colder soon. So wear your socks and jackets. And don't cough on each other.